starfish. So um, what I'm going to do is be able to take one of the most popular medium posts that I've ever written and I'm going to share it with you live. So, and at the end of this, I also want to invite you to be a part of something a little bit bigger than um, myself and also introduce you to one of the leading minds in this area and industry. So I, about, I don't know, six to eight months ago, maybe even longer than that, I started spelling human, H-U-M-X-N. So for, for those of you that, uh, let's see if I can, I can do it uh, live here and be able to, to type it out for you. So here is how I spell human. There you go. All right. So what uh, I noticed was that I was getting some feedback from individuals that were like, hey, you had this error in your blog. And now remember, I this was before I had put out the blog of why human is not misspelled. And so I would post something on LinkedIn or I post something on Medium or I post something on my blog. And uh, the most politest, most politest, that's probably not English, um, I'd have these individuals that would be so sweet and reach out and say, hey, um, you have a misspelling or you have a typo. And mind you, most of my stuff, most, not all, I, I will save my editor from that statement, but not all of my stuff goes through my editor. But primarily the things that go on Medium and the blogs that go on the website uh, do go through an editor. And so how is it that for months on end, my editor has been missing this clearly misspelled word? So I created this blog, this article to share on Medium to kind of announce why my thought process behind this. And it took off. And I had so many comments um, and people messaging me just because I took the time to explain my logic and my reasoning. So I want to do that for you. So why human is not misspelled is not a gender thing. It's not a man versus woman thing. Um, most of you know that I'm an individual with six legs. There's my other four back there. I identify as an individual who is differently abled and in a world and a shifting culture where there's more awareness towards diversity and inclusion, I was wondering about our language. And, you know, if you think about it, um, using the going from men's and women's bathrooms to, um, you know, just uh, having a non-binary option or, or having a gender neutral option. I started to think about all of these words that we have and that we use every single day, like fireman has become firefighter, um, postman has become, you know, um, the, uh, the male person instead of male lady or, or male man. And I just started evaluating, I, I, I speak four languages, but particularly ours, uh, I, I, mine, I should say, the, my, my, my native tongue of English. And then also I started looking at these other languages that I speak, such as French and Spanish. And so in French and Spanish, you have like los amigos, los amigas, um, and, uh, you know, mi ami, uh, all of these kinds of things. And so um, mon ami and ma ami, in French, uh, in French, and I was like, yeah. So there's, there's these. How does non-binary impact um, and be represented in all these other languages? And so, I can't. My focus is on work-life alignment, and so what one of the things that I could do was to bring this in to my work and start with this little piece of in my writings using H U M X N. And if anything else, what I had hoped for and what it's done is it's caused the individual to reading it to pause and say, is that misspelled? And not ask me, Bonnie Young, if I've misspelled this word, but really challenging our language and English and all of these words that we have that end in man or all of these identities that end in man and that maybe they're not as inclusive as they once were. And for those of you that are listening that might be offended, I'll point out the fact that English as a language has evolved 
over centuries. And so there's words that are not so popular in the past 30 years, like groovy, that, you know, maybe that's more like 50 years, but that they're not a part of our language today. And so it's not unreasonable to believe that we have the power to start to transform our language to represent our emotions, to represent our culture, to represent our inclusive desires in this world. And so this was just my one small step and way in order to do it for my own self. And then through that, it's offered me the opportunity to engage in these incredible conversations with others to not justify why I'm spelling it, but to offer this explanation. And so now I'm offering this explanation for all of you out there so that you can understand why I made this choice. I'm not asking you to switch to this spelling. I'm simply sharing with you my reasoning and my mindset around it. And if you wanted more on that, you can go directly to the blog on Medium. I can put the link in the description for this video below. And that is the most um, incredible mind that I have ever and brilliant mind that I've ever met in this space for diversity and inclusion as well as the work they do in the non-binary representation and so that's Dr. Tiffany Jana if you do not recognize or do not have the pleasure to know them they are a black non-binary individual and they uh, also identify as an individual with a disability and so to have all of those identities and be able to do the work that they do and bring all of that forward into one powerful, present, inclusive energy and to be honest and authentic about the work that they're doing and the journey that they're on is truly inspirational. And they have a YouTube channel, so I'd encourage you to look up their YouTube channel as well, as well as read through the, the blog, which fully explains my, not theirs. I, I just chose to use their photo because I believe that um, their inspiration is, is a lot of why I chose to write this article. But read the article, you know, so that you can have, I think it's a three minute read so that you can have a better understanding even further than what I have joined with you to explain today. And then this is just the first steps. We're just seeing the first little cracks of light coming through in this culture change and in this culture shift. And there are little decisions that you can make and little adjustments, little awarenesses of these unconscious bias and um, subconscious microaggressions that we do. And for me, Spelling human with an X was one way that I felt like I could contribute and make the world a better place because ultimately that's what I want to do is to make a difference and make the world a better place. And so for those of you who have been incredible in wanting to make sure that I'm not putting out content that has misspellings and grammatical errors, which I probably do all the time, so thank you for that um, space and permission to be able to be authentic. Uh, writer, I am not. Speaker, I do my best. I feel like I am more, I feel more connected to you when we're doing it this way, but I do try to put out articles so that my thoughts are documented in written form for those of you that like to read them. So if you want more of this, my encouragement to you. I would love to continue on this journey with you of work-life alignment and being able to ask those questions and be able to align what the world is capable of and what you believe the world is capable of and where we are right now. And so if you're down for that journey, if you want to be a part of that journey, please comment below, please like this video, please share this video, please subscribe to the channel. And also let me know what other topics we can present to be able to build steps closer to that work-life alignment. And then also go to Dr. Tiffany Jana's YouTube channel and sus subscribe there. I promise you I can speak. Subscribe there as well because you're definitely going not going to want to miss their story time. And they have a multi-generational channel 
which is something that is I think is just incredible because it's truly not us that are going to be able to change the world in our lifetime. We are going to start it. We're going to be the catalysts for this change, but then it's going to be the next generation, the children that we're raising and the children that we're handing this world off to. And so being able to invest in yourself and teaching children how to be self-aware and how to not be self-conscious, but be self-aware and to be self to be conscious of their selves rather than self-conscious and to use words that they feel that expresses themselves and not just words that society has handed to them. So that's my steps for making the world a better place today. That's just the little things that, that I've done. So please like, please share, please comment and let me know because that's how I engage with you. That's how I know what to give you more of that's going to make a difference. And that's the only reason that I'm doing this is for you so that ultimately we can make the world a better place. So thank you, Starfish, for making a difference. Stay safe, stay sane, and I'll see you soon.